biological mother, Ashley Hayes, struggled with addiction and was without much family support of any kind. At age 15, she gave birth for the first time to her son, Elijah. Two years later, she gave birth to a premature baby she named Caleb. Soon thereafter, a failed drug test following Caleb's birth landed the boys in the custody of family services. She was devastated to give the boys up. Initially, Ashley was allowed to visit her sons in their new home, but that ended when she signed away her parental rights through the advice and pressure from family services organizations. She was a troubled teenage mother with essentially no support and dealing with active addiction. She thought she was giving her sons a better life. Little did she know the adoptive family was brutal and dished out terrible abuse, creating a fertile ground for something awful to happen. At the young age of 13 years old, Elijah Lishing shot and killed his younger brother, Caleb Lishing, who was only 11 years old in what police officials say seemed to have been a premeditated act. It was an overcast evening on April 23rd, 2018 in the sleepy town of Streetsboro, Ohio. The parents, Dina and Marty Lishing, were out for the evening and hired a babysitter to watch after Elijah and Caleb. At 8.30 p.m., Caleb was already fast asleep in his room. The babysitter was there in a room nearby. Meanwhile, Elijah was supposed to go to bed at 9 p.m., but he was still fully awake. Elijah went to open his grandfather's locked gun cabinet, but he couldn't find the key to get it open, so he resorted to using tools to dismantle the bottom wood part of the cabinet to break inside. Elijah took the 357 Magnum and went into his brother Caleb's bedroom. Caleb was fast asleep and laying on his stomach. Elijah walked up and held the firearm to Caleb's back and pulled the trigger. The babysitter then ran into Caleb's bedroom and that's where she found a severely injured Caleb laying in his bed. On that Monday night around 9.30 p.m., the frantic and desperate babysitter called 911 to report what she had found. She told a dispatcher the 11-year-old boy she was babysitting had been severely injured and may not be breathing. She said she didn't know what happened, but to please hurry and get help to the house as soon as possible. When asked by dispatchers if there were any weapons in the house, the woman said she did not know and that she didn't think so. She yelled for Elijah, but couldn't find him. He had disappeared. Later on the call with the 911 dispatcher, the babysitter said there was a hole in Caleb Lushing's neck. She said that she was smelling something she thought might be the smell of gunpowder. Caleb was taken immediately by the paramedics to the nearest hospital. Unfortunately, he passed away soon after arriving at the hospital. When the police had arrived at the scene, Elijah was nowhere to be found. He had fled the scene on foot. The police began to search for him and luckily found him close by and then took him into custody. At the time of the attack and his subsequent arrest, Elijah was charged with aggravated murder and was held at a juvenile detention center. According to the doctors who evaluated Elijah, they said he had already suffered significant and serious neglect by the time he was placed with the lishings. While his biological teenage mother suffered from addiction issues, his biological father suffered from his own mental health issues, and ultimately, Elijah suffered more in the Lishings home. His adoptive mother, Dina, never really wanted Elijah and focused all of her energy on a premature Caleb who had critical medical needs. Elijah told the doctor that he was berated and beaten and suffered harsh punishments while at the Lishing house. Some of his punishments included being locked in a dark garage for hours at a time and forced to kneel on rice when he was as young as five years old. One of the doctors who testified, Dr. Thomas, was quoted saying, unfortunately, the murder of young Caleb Lishing took place because he thought it was a way out of the home of his adopted father. According to the doctor, Elijah suffered from reactive attachment disorder. He never formed emotional bonds with his parents or his brother. He acted out in many different ways that got him into trouble, stealing, lying, and lighting local fires. As a child, he twice tried to commit suicide and had received intensive counseling and mental health services, but according to the doctor, it came too late. 
Some of the testimony also came from another psychologist who noted that Elijah was diagnosed with multiple psychological problems, including paranoia, reactive attachment disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, and conduct disorder. Another psychologist diagnosed Elijah with schizophrenia. The problems were rooted in the abuse Elijah had suffered as a child, and all of the doctors agreed on that. It's sad though, because unfortunately, Elijah's developmental trauma and comorbid disorders were not accurately diagnosed until after he was incarcerated. If they had been properly diagnosed earlier and he received treatment, maybe that could have prevented this horrible incident. A trial hearing took place to determine if Elijah would be classified as a serious youthful offender. That type of classification would mean Elijah could face an adult prison sentence if he breaks a set of criteria while serving a sentence in youth prison. At the hearing, Elijah spoke out saying, I didn't realize that I loved my brother or that I love my family until I lost it. He went on to say, I was living inside my head, unable to determine the difference between imagination and reality. I've changed though. I may not have my imagination or my emotions completely under control, but I'm trying. All I'm asking for is a chance. Martin Lishing, Elijah's adoptive father, responded to Elijah and told him, I know I'm not perfect and I made a lot of mistakes, but I want you to know that I did my best. I love you and I always wanted you and I still do want you as my son. I pray for you and I hope you will get the help that you need. Elijah was convicted of murder and has been sentenced to juvenile detention until he turns 21 years old. Once he turns 21, his case will be re-evaluated with potential to serve more time in adult detention. And the record courier supposedly said that Judge Robert Berger said that despite abuse the boy suffered as a child, it did not excuse shooting and killing his brother. The biological mother, Ashley, found the news of the killing by trying to stay included in the lives of her sons through social media. Obviously devastated by the news, she tried to come up with a new plan or idea about how to move forward with an intention of connecting with Elijah, if that were something all parties feel he may benefit from. If the children were in the care of appropriate, attentive, and loving parents who were able to raise children in a healthy manner, maybe this would have never happened. How do you think the court should handle cases with such young perpetrators and such young victims? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'm Brandy. See you next time.